Welcome to the So So Regressive. It's time for the final review of the Savage Model 10 GRS in 6.5 Creedmoor. We're going to take a look at some of the various challenges that we've put this rifle to, and I'm going to put a link to the playlist for everything that we've done so far. But yeah, we're going to take a close look at what we've done with this rifle, what its accuracy is like. We're going to delve down into the hardware, and then we're going to have a discussion of kind of the functions of this rifle and some of the good places that this could be put to use. We're going to take a look at a couple of different kinds of ammo that we've put through it, and before we really jump into all of this, I just want to give a, a quick thanks to the patrons of the Destructive Arts on Patreon. Thanks a bunch, you guys, for helping to make this possible. Thank you, Jackson Beach, the uh, the 300 Win Mag sponsor of the Destructive Arts, and uh, thank you a bunch to uh, you guys at Savage and at Bushnell and at Federal uh, for helping to provide some of this equipment that I can test. After stripping the base off the rifle and making sure that it was properly loctited and torqued down and then checking the torque on everything else, I went out, I did the break-in period, and I did some basic accuracy testing including a 600 yard group test, but then the real challenges started up. I did the egg challenge, which is an attempt to shoot six eggs at 300 yards and you only get six shots to do it. And despite the difficulty of this challenge, I was able to hit it four times. I was able to hit four of those eggs out of six, which is a personal best for me. And I, I think that's a really good testament to the accuracy of the rifle. Aside from, you know, the sort of groups that I was seeing on paper. If I can nail eggs at 300 yards, yeah, the rifle's accurate. Next up was the unknown distance challenge, and this is one that really puts the whole system to the test. This is one that is an especial challenge for the shooter, the spotter, and then as far as equipment goes, it's a real test of the Bushnell HDMR2 that we had out there. That's a 3.5 to 21 power scope. It is all mill. It has a Horus H59 reticle in it. Yeah. And this thing really showed its stuff. All of the little things that are inside this reticle were just perfect for being able to not only, you know, be able to shoot the targets at various distances, but it was the only equipment that we used to find out what the distances were in the first place. So we used that fine reticle to figure out an approximate range to the target and then shoot. And really by the end, we were able to range and then hit these things in one shot, including uh, my friend Cole's shot at 425 yards. It was just his first shot at a spray paint can and he totally took it out. Great rifle, great scope. And I think these practical tests are, re are really showing what the whole thing is capable of. Next was the sound test where we got to hear what 6.5 Creedmoor sounds like if you are the target, if bullets are incoming toward your quarry, what kind of sounds are they going to hear? They're going to hear the crack of the bullet, they're going to hear some of the pop of the rifle, but yes, it does start to affect that sound the further back you go. I've demonstrated the accuracy of the rifle on paper a little bit, but for the most part I've shown it through these practical tests. The 140 grain American Eagle ammunition, that stuff printed very well at all distances, it did very well. I'd say that it was probably overall about three quarters MOA, but it may actually have been tighter than that as it was starting to break in. I didn't do a final group with that, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was starting to tighten up from that three quarter MOA just because pretty much anything I pointed at, I would hit it. Now, on the other hand, the Federal Gold Medal Burger ammunition with 130 grain Burger hybrids, this rifle didn't seem to care for it all that much. Watch this. It looks like this particular rifle has a preference for the 140 grain Federal American Eagle ammo. Uh, this is the size of that group. You know, you can see that, okay, it's kinda between these fingers, about that distance and that's at 300 yards and down here this is my 600 yard group with uh, the 140 grain stuff so you can see that okay that's about the size everything in here that's about the size of the 300 yard group i just got with the gold metal burger open it up just a bit and that is the 140 grain so double the distance but it's definitely not double the size this is still a decent sized group right here. I had intended to take this rifle to a 600 yard match and see how it does, but by that time I was out of the 140 grain ammo and the 130s just weren't performing as well as I had hoped. I'm gonna save up the rest of that 130 grain ammo and hopefully we'll be able to test that in the new Savage Stealth Evolution rifle that's coming out. I'm gonna see if I can get my hands on one in 6.5 Creedmoor and show what it's capable of.
I also hope to be able to do some reloading for 6.5 Creedmoor, so watch for that. What made this rifle work so well in these challenges? Let's take a look at the hardware. And first off, we have to pay attention to this, the GRS Berserk stock. This is a Norwegian stock. It's a fiberglass reinforced polymer stock, and it's not hollow like you typically see in a lot of the polymer stocks that you buy, or at least it's not as hollow. It's, it's a pretty dense thing. But you can see that it has an adjustable cheek riser, it has an adjustable butt pad, and it has that bizarre grip that is both canted and offset. And it may look a little bit strange, but it just plain works. It, put your, it puts the finger right exactly where you want it on the trigger. It is just as natural as breathing. You can choose whether you want to put your thumb up on the side of the stock, or if you want to wrap it around. And up front, you get a decently long little forearm here, and you get a little bit of rubber padding just in case you do want to use this for offhand work. It attaches to this Model 10 Action via two large pillars, and they're not exactly rounded like you usually see. They're kind of a, a rounded, squared off deal, and they seem to do their job just fine. The bottom metal features an oversized trigger loop, so you can get your gloved fingers in on this very fine Accu trigger. This is an extremely crisp two pounds right here. And then this magwell can fit these Accuracy International magazines. This is a magpull that fits that, that size. You can also use the original Accuracy International mags. This is a 10 rounder right here, and that's what the rifle comes with. I think that magazine is one of the major factors in making this bolt throw as nice as it is. This is a very slick bolt throw. There's really nothing hanging up on it. Since it's only feeding one round at a time, it's not having to deal with anything staggered or anything like that. Uh, there seems to be very little pressure on the bolt, and so unlocking is very slick and can be done with fingertips. Slides easily, and then slides back in easily as well. This oversized bolt knob feels really good. The muzzle end of the barrel is threaded for 5 8 24, and you can see that it has a varmint taper. It's, it's a pretty aggressive taper, and it features these flutes, and it really makes the rifle overall much lighter than you would expect, and it makes the balance pretty good if you do have to take a standing shot or some other awkward shot. It doesn't feel like you're trying to hold up a cannon. As usual, since this is a Savage, you do get this barrel nut, so if one day you want to either replace the barrel because it's been shot out, or you want to swap to a different caliber, there you go. All you have to do is just take that off, get your head spacing right, and you're good to go. Three position safety. Cocking indicator. One quick note on the GRS stock, it does not sit on a rear bag well. You can see that I just kind of have it jammed in that uh, vacuous area below there. But what I'm used to shooting is a rifle that has a straight sort of area here from the toe up to the grip, uh, kind of your traditional stock shape. That's going to work really well for sliding the bag back and forth and getting your elevation. And in this case, it, uh, it, it's kind of clunky. What I ended up doing is using the good old sock full of rocks. Uh, you can use airsoft BBs or something. And of course, there are those little tactical squishy bags. But you want something that you can change your elevation by squashing and stretching uh, the bag to fit underneath. Because really, you just kind of have this little flat section. That's all you get. If you're going to raise and lower it, it's not going to be by moving the bag this way. It's going to be by moving the bag this way. One thing that I can't emphasize enough is the comfort of this rifle stock and how important that is to getting good shots. We're used to contorting ourselves to fit a stock that doesn't really fit the human proportions. We're used to kind of twisting our wrists around and doing all kinds of things in order to see through the scope. And in this case, it kind of gets the rifle out of the way, which is exactly what you want. You want to be able to focus on your breathing, on your trigger pull, and this just gets everything lined up nicely if you're a righty. I noticed as I was shooting, first of all, the comfort of the adjustable cheek rest right here. This is unbelievable and this is important when you're using different heights of scope mounts. Um, this will get your head at all ages and levels where you're at where it's comfortable for your head to take the pressure off your neck to shoot a lot of rounds in a match. Also, when I heard about the slight cant in this handle on the GRS, 
I was like, yeah, it's not straight up and down. I wonder, you know, why is it like that? Well, I took my hand at home and I grasped, I took it like this and I held it straight for a long period of time. And I can feel different muscles in there. You know, they're working, of course. So then I just went a natural cant in my wrist, the same pressure holding on it. And I understand now why it's so comfortable. There was a lot of degree, lesser degree of fatigue when you're canted. This is more of a natural position. So GRS, putting that in there, I really like the feel of that. I know it sounds different. You're, you're thinking, well, I'll hold my hand. When I'm down in prone, my hand's gonna be like this. No, it, it really felt natural. And I use a thumb rest to keep the pressure. I'm a thumb rester. A lot of us, you'll see guys not holding it this but they hold it here there's a little place in this stock that's perfect for your thumb it's what it's for it just rests your thumb right there and i used it and it was unbelievably comfortable after all the rounds that i've put through this rifle and all the time that i've spent with it i think i have a pretty good bead on what it's good at what it's uh, particularly capable at uh, first off you can just kind of think of it as a custom rifle in a box and not just a custom rifle for you, but a custom rifle for your friends, your, uh, your family. You know, if you have a, a younger shooter in the family, it's really easy to get this thing down to that, I think about 13 inch length of pull. So if you do have a younger teenager or, you know, an older uh, boy or girl or somebody that wants to shoot, then you can get a pretty short length of pull. Of course, that cheek riser is going to be very adjustable there. And overall, you get just magnificent uh, ergonomics. The thing feels really good in hand. And uh, the weight overall is also very nice. So as far as you know, the type of shooting that you can do with it, it's definitely designed to be a prone rifle. It's designed for your tactical styles of shooting, but it will flex into some other things. So for uh, you know, long range hunters, I think this would be a really good option. I think varminters would love it, uh, especially in that six millimeter Creedmoor uh, loading. Uh, six five would be pretty awesome too for maybe some of the bigger varmints like, uh, I don't know, groundhogs, coyotes, that'd be really cool. Uh, it's a, it'd be a really good long range shooter type of gun. So if you wanna be able to take a rifle just straight out of the box, get some good ammo for it or make, especially make some good hand loads for it and try to you know, work up your ranges. Maybe you're out west and you have the kind of range where you can do that. Uh, fantastic rifle for that sort of thing. And that's the cool thing about this. It just comes out of the box all sorted. Instead of having to swap over to a, you know, a different stock or come up with a different barrel and all this sort of stuff or go you know, send your barrel off to go get it threaded, that sort of thing. It kind of just has everything you need all in one package. And when you consider that the GRS Berserk stock by itself generally costs about, I think, 650 bucks, and you're getting the Model 10, the old Model 10 hardware, fluted, threaded, uh, Accuracy International magazines, you know, in the bottom metal and all that, it really is a great price for a rifle that I think that you can grow with and enjoy in all kinds of situations. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.